everyone. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today I am going to be doing my nails while also telling you guys about the books that I read in April. I am using the Kiss Salon Extend LED Soft Gel System. I have never used these before so I want to try it out. It is, this one is just like the basic one. It is um, short nails. They're like white or something but I have never done anything like this before, so I'm excited to try it. I don't even know what this color is called or if it even has a name, but I'm excited to give this a try. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get started with this and let's go ahead and talk about the books. The first book I read in April was A Long Time Coming by Megan Quinn. And I have like a love-hate relationship with Megan Quinn because there are, so many books that are like way too like explicitly spicy for me and then there are some that are like just the right amount and I am not super comfortable with super spicy books so sometimes I struggle with picking the ones that will make me want to run and which ones I really like but I really liked this one. This one is the third in the Kane Brothers series and I really liked the other two and so I was really excited about this one and I actually think this was my favorite one out of all three because this one was best friends to lovers and that is my favorite romance trope so yeah just best friends to lovers my favorite of all time so love that. Then I listened to In My Dreams I Hold a Knife and I actually, oh this is by Ashley Winstead and I'm not gonna lie I tried to read this book before and I just couldn't get into it and I actually started reading it um, because I was able to get it from Kindle Unlimited and then I just decided to give up and listen to it and there were some shocking elements in it that like I said shocked me but also there were some elements that just like I don't know I was bored there were a lot of characters which made it hard for me to picture there was a lot of going back and forth I gave it four stars because the twist at the end was unexpected but um it wasn't my favorite but I've heard so many people say this is such a fast-paced thriller that I was just surprised that it wasn't a book that I was like obsessed with pushing my cuticles back all right so the next one that I read was she's not sorry by Megan her name's not Megan it's Mary Mary Kubica she is one of my favorite thriller authors actually I think she is is like my top thriller author and she is so good like her plot twists are always I'm sorry I can't find my nail clippers find my nail clippers anyway what was I saying she's not sorry by Mary Kubica like I said Mary Kubica has some of the very best plot twists in my opinion and because she does the plot twist so well like I never know what to expect. Truly I am just always like really shocked by them. This one is about an ICU nurse who ends up being the nurse for a patient who dumped off bridge and they think it was an attempt to end her own life but then police come in saying it's like suspected of foul play and this nurse also makes a new friend and she's just got stuff going on and like I said plot twist so big I was not expecting it I loved this it was five stars the next one that I read was The Rule Book by Sarah Adams and this one actually came out in April. I was so excited to get my hands on it. Sarah Adams is one of my favorite authors just in general. She makes romance novels or she writes romance novels and this one was just so sweet. This was a very highly anticipated book for me. It was the second book from The Cheat Sheet. So it is the Los Angeles Sharks is the like series that it is. But honestly, it's just so freaking sweet to me. This one is exes turned fake relationships relationship turned lovers and I love that so much. You have Derek and Nora who are exes and then Nora ends up being his agent as a sports person. <laughs> his agent as just like an athlete and it just it's so sweet. Like I am like kicking and screaming reading this because it's just so sweet and Sarah Adams always writes really sweet books. This was her first book that she's written that has not been closed door romance. Basically if you don't know it closed door means it just means that everything that like happens beyond a kiss is seen like off the page so it's like you're like not in the room but this one was her first open door book and it was the most perfect amount of open door for me it was not explicit at all I would feel comfortable letting like a teenager read this 
um, it was so sweet and it made me feel so good and I don't know it just her books are always so feel good for me they're like comfort books to me um, and I'm always so excited to read them so five stars for me on that one the next one was called by baby by Carola Lovering or Carola I have no idea how it's pronounced um, this woman has a best friend and her best friend kidnaps her baby um <laughs> I gave this one four stars because it was super fast paced for quite a while and you know what's happening and you know that the best friend kidnapped the baby but you don't know what's gonna happen like after that so it's it's very interesting it explores the dynamics of adult female friendships and how those change over time when you become a mother and just when your when your life changes when you get married that kind of thing but I gave it four stars because I feel like after the big reveal or whatever I feel like I was just like waiting on something else to happen and it didn't so the next book I read was Counting the Cost by Jill Duggar if you're familiar with the Duggar family they are the family of 17 18 19 kids and counting and Jill is the second oldest daughter and the first daughter to have been married and I was not sure what to expect I am like fascinated by the whole IBLP cult if you know what that is if you don't then it is what it is but I was fascinated by I'm fascinated by like reading about cults and the brainwashing and things like that but it is absolutely astounding the way that their family not family but the children were treated um and if you know anything about the Duggar family you know that things have happened with the oldest son and things like that this was a memoir and I just I devoured this book it was so good uh the writing was not like superb it wasn't like a literary masterpiece but she was telling her story she's telling about her life and about the emotional and psychological abuse that she she endured throughout her childhood and even a lot of her adulthood um, even you know being married and having kids and um, it was just very eye-opening and you know when you see something like that you always think there has to be something more going on behind the scenes that we don't know about but reading it was just fascinating like I said I devoured it okay I clipped all of my nails so they're all good and short now I like having my natural nails as short as possible so that when it grows out with the nails on it it's good to go um Okay, and then I'm going to file my nails. Okay, so the next book I read was Good Half Gone by Taryn Fisher, and I love Taryn Fisher. All of her books have been so good. She's like the queen of psychological thrillers, in my opinion. She, this book is about a, um, a girl who is an identical twin, and when she was a teenager, her identical twin went missing, and she is basically trying to figure out what happened to her sister, or where she's at, um, just the history of of what happened there. I thought it was really good. It came out I think in April so it's a fairly new book. The next one is uh, Darling Girls by Sally Hepworth and Sally Hepworth is another one of those like I have to read her books. Um, April was a really good month for um, for new releases and this one was just so good. It's about the, these girls who grew up in a foster home and it was a very um, abusive situation but it was hard to do anything about it and then all of the girls so it goes back and forth between like their experience while they were in foster care and then what their lives are now that they are adults and so they're adults and they've just gotten a call from the police in the town that they were foster children in and there has been a body found under the home and they're called back to be witnesses to be questioned by the police um, and they're trying to figure out who this body belongs to while also running into their previous foster mother who again was abusive but there was no like physical evidence of it um I don't know it was really really good. I thought it was one of her best and I was just shocked by everything to be honest. I was I was literally shocked like the whole book. I just my mouth was gaping the whole time. <laughs> I thought it was really good and I was also really thankful to have received this book early. I got it um, about a week before it was published and the Hash It book group with um, uh, Grand Central Publishing sent it to me so I'm super thankful that they sent that to me so thank you guys for sending. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. It came out on the 23rd so really big fan. The the next book I read was First Lie Wins by Ashley Elston and this was not what I was expecting at all because you go into the first chapter having no idea what's going on. Basically you have this girl who is pretending to be someone else. She has taken on a fake name, she has a fake story, and she is trying to kind of figure out why the person who sent her to be this fake person is wanting her to do whatever she's doing. I don't know how to explain it. Um, but she has all these fake lives and she's connected to a bunch of 
different things. So it's it's a uh, it's hard to explain it. You'll just have to check it out. It's a good book though. It's really good. Two more after this, there is Bridesmaid for Hire by Megan Quinn. And like I said before, sometimes it's really hard for me to tell if a Megan Quinn book is going to be like way too spicy for me. If it has an alternate cover, it has real people on the cover, then I know that I probably am not going to like it. But if it's a cartoony cover, then I feel like I'm probably going to like it. This one has a cartoony cover and I feel like it was like very middle of the road for me. I thought, sorry, I thought it was really good, but there were parts of it that I feel like just like dragged on. I feel like we could have just like skipped some of it. It's about this girl. She goes to Bora Bora on vacation. She is a successful wedding planner and she's like always thinking about work. So she goes to Bora Bora on vacation and she runs into her brother's best friend and she has always kind of harbored a little crush on him. And her brother's best friend is there because his boss's daughter is getting married. So he's there so that he can like work on the business deal and so this girl pretends to be the, the guy's girlfriend and so they have to share a bungalow they're sharing a bed and it's it's a whole thing they've always harbored secret crushes on each other we know how fake dating goes but it's enemies and fake dating and I really liked it but like I said there were parts of it that I just felt like were excessive I just felt like that it just kept dragging on <laughs> so also I hate a miscommunication trope like I feel like when someone does something wrong or like hurts your feelings or whatever I feel like not giving the other person the opportunity to even say anything just really grinds my gears I don't know maybe I'm just in a healthy relationship so I the communicate miscommunication trope just really bugs me so I give this one four stars for that reason and the last book I read was after that night by what am I saying by Karen Slaughter it is the 11th book in the Will Trent series I love the Will Trent series I have literally so many of those books I'm not sure if I have all of them but I have a good number of them. Karen Slaughter was like the very first author that really got me into reading thriller books. I will say that if you have any kind of trigger warnings or you can't handle like gory details this book the like her books are not for you. She writes very 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 descriptive and they can often be gory books and that's again not gonna be for everyone but I really like them but I also don't have any kind of like triggers or anything. This book is heavy on the SA so if that's something that triggers you do not read this at all. Like stay far far away from it but if that's something that you can handle and something that you are interested in reading about then definitely check this out. But Sarah Linton is engaged to Will Trent and she was assaulted when she was younger and it altered the course of her entire life and it means that she feels like she has a duty to make sure that every single girl who has something like this happen to her makes sure that it's reported and documented and taken care of in the best way possible and in the beginning of the book it starts with a character who has been assaulted and then eventually um, succumbs to her injuries in the hospital and she vows to find out what happened who did it to her and to make sure sure that the person who did it is put away forever. And then she finds out that that assault and her assault are connected and so she's trying to piece together the puzzle of her and that other girl and it's it's a whole thing so there's lots of description so like I said I would definitely be wary of that but I did listen to it so it was able to go through really fast but yeah I thought it was really good but now let me go back to my to my nails. That was all the books. That was all 11 of them. Um, I realized I couldn't do both at the same time. So now I'm gonna go through the nails and figure out which ones work best for my nails size wise. I'm gonna pause this because it's gonna be a long video otherwise. Okay, I finished the nails. I guess this is just the extension. The one that I picked was like a clear one. So I think I am supposed to paint them. I'm not sure. I guess I don't have to, but here they are. I also have another set that's like already colored, which is like a pink, but it's hard to tell the difference here. But I think I'm gonna try to paint these and just do like regular polish because it's not on my actual nail. It's so strange feeling because it's got like the gel underneath, but I'm a big fan and it was a little messy, but overall I'm satisfied. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video here, but if you guys enjoyed it, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel down below and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.